Hello and welcome to my first 3DS Max tutorial. Um, I do not claim to be an expert in 3DS Max. I'm a learner myself, but I find sometimes when you make a tutorial about something you've learnt, that that information sticks in your head and can work even better. So I'm going to be doing a tutorial about quickly creating, but mainly about controlling some cartoony eyes. So we're going to make some eyes and we're going to add materials to those eyes and then we're going to add some eyelids around it and we're going to control the eye so we're going to create controllers and make the controllers move the eye around and then we're also going to duplicate it so we've got two eyes we're going to make a master controller to control both eyes and then we're going to add even more controllers so that we can control the eyelids so that they open and close and so we're going to use constraints and we're going to use wire parameters we're going to use materials we're going to create some very simple objects and we're going to just have a bit of fun trying to do something that's reasonably simple but gives you a whole bunch of really important 3ds max skills now the first thing that we need to do if we're going to create this cartoon eyes we need to create a sphere so we go to our create column which is just here click on create and make sure we're on the first tab which says geometry and we're on standard primitives and we're going to create a sphere so we click on sphere but we're not going to click and drag in a viewport in actual fact I want to make this in the front viewport so I'm just going to right click on the front viewport by right clicking I select it but rather than clicking and dragging and creating one so if I wanted I can click and drag and create a sphere I don't want to do that so I'm just going to right click to undo because what I want to use is the keyboard entry tab down here now when you use the keyboard entry tab if I just open it up you'll see that it is set to X, Y and Z so I want them all zero so they'll be absolutely in the middle of my grid and I can choose a specific radius for my sphere which is going to really help me particularly when I create another sphere a bit later on just a tiny bit bigger for the eyelids so select that and I'm going to type in 30 you can have 30 units, I happen to be working in centimetres but any of those is ok click create and there is my sphere right in the middle of my scene right in the middle of my grid now I can change its name over here so I'm going to call this eyeball eyeball and I'm going to put L for left and I'm not really very keen on that colour so I'm going to double click on the colour swatch just here and I'm going to choose a light blue and click OK so there is my sphere now I'm going to work in my front view so again it is selected it's got the yellow border around it I'm going to hit Alt and W to go full screen Alt W takes that viewport full screen and if I just use the middle button of my mouse which is a wheel and I scroll forward while pushing down I can get a closer look at it now at the moment I can't see my edges if I want to see my edges I have to hit F4 and if I don't want to see a shaded view I just want to see a wireframe view I hit F3 but actually a shaded view is useful so I'm going to hit F3 and I can still see all these lines around it and you'll see that this particular sphere has 32 segments I don't need 32 segments I think I'll probably get away with something like 24 so I'm just going to highlight that and hit 24 hit return and if you've lost all your parameters because you've accidentally clicked away somewhere else you can actually get access to these parameters in the modify panel which is just next to the create panel click on that and you've got your circle which has got a radius of 30 centimeters 24 segments it's exactly as we created it now we want it to look a little bit like an eyeball so we need to make just a few changes to it and the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to create the materials that I will be applying to the eye a bit later on so the materials icon is this one up here for the materials editor and I'm going to be working in the compact editor but if you click and hold on this little down arrow you can have either the compact or you can have the slate this is the slate view if you click on that you'll see this is the slate version you'll see I've already created some materials and if I click and hold and choose the top one there you'll see we've got the material editor now I'm going to create those particular ones again just to demonstrate them to you first thing we want to do is have the whites of the eye so here is our default material ready to be created and what we want to do is have white now we would just click in diffuse and we could then select white but another way of doing it is to take the white from the specular below 
click it and drag it and drop it on top of diffuse and we just say copy it and now this is completely white however it's not reflecting very well and if you've got a white eyeball you generally speaking want to have a little bit of light shining off it it's going to look reflective so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this bit that says specular highlights and pull the specular highlights right up to about say 50 or thereabouts and that gives us a nice wide sort of specular but we want a slightly narrower one that would look better with uh, water on an eye so I'm going to pull up the glossiness to make it a little bit more pinpoint that looks about right I think so I've got 51 for my specular 23 for my glossiness and then all I need to do is apply this to the actual selected item and I can click this second button here that says assign material to selection click on that and now that's a white eyeball now importantly I've got my specular levels right and I want to copy this across for both the iris the colored bit of the eye and the pupil the black hole in the middle so rather than creating a new material the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this particular material call it my eye white and then I'm going to grab hold of that material and I'm going to drag it across to the next material slot and let go and this time I'm going to call this iris I -R -I -S, which is the color part of the eye and all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on where it says diffuse this color swatch next to it and I'm going to change it to sort of a bluey color so something that can be quite noticeable for this particular example that's a little bit something like that that'll be fine click OK and I'm not going to apply it because at the moment I can't apply it unless I apply it to the whole thing because I can't just select bits and pieces we'll come to that in a minute the other thing I need to do is also create the pupil and once again that's going to have the same specular highlights so I can grab hold of this color and drag it across to another sample slot let go and I can click on diffuse and I can take that down to black because obviously the pupil is black and click OK and actually I ought to name this particular material so at the moment it says iris I'm going to call this one pupil hit return there you go so I've got my colors but I can't put my iris and my pupil colors on until I've made some changes to this object so I can select little bits of it so I'm just going to shut my material editor for the moment and I'm going to select this item and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to convert to and I'm going to change it to an editable poly click on editable poly and now I can select different bits of it depending on what choices I've made I can select if we look over here selection vertexes that shows me the vertexes that I can select or vertices I can select individual edges which we'll do in a moment um, and I can choose polygons or I can choose the whole particular item so I'm going to start off by selecting an edge because I want to make my pupil a lot smaller now it's actually very hard to see this pupil with this particular color white so I'm just going to work through it and you'll see what I'm doing in a second so click on edge and then I want to find an inner edge which is just there nope I don't want a long edge I want a wide edge there you go I've got an edge and now actually what I want to do is select this ring and if I open up my graphite modeling tools you'll see that I've got something that says loop click on loop and it loops the whole thing for me and now I can make it smaller simply by choosing my scale tool select the scale tool and then I can pull those both together and make a much smaller pupil in the middle so now I have a smaller hole in the middle for the pupil and a larger selector around it which I can actually add my iris material to so let's just do alt W and I'm going to go to the perspective viewpoint just to demonstrate this a little bit better so right click on that alt W again to take that full screen then I'm going to hold the alt key and my push down my middle mouse button and I can rotate that around so I can see it a little bit better take it there so it's quite visible in fact let's zoom it in a bit there we go now all I want to do is select the polygons in the middle here I don't want to select ones at the back so I'm going to click over here where it says ignore back facing so click on ignore back facing and that means it will only choose polygons at the front and I actually only want to select polygons and I can click it here but now my graphite modeling tools open I can click polygons here and the other thing I want to do is make a circular selection I don't want to make a square selection now to do that I can take my region selection tool here and just click down and take the circular one so I make sure I'm selecting my object and then I can click and drag and then everything inside that circle let's just check we've got what we wanted is selected and nothing on the back 
So I'm holding my Alt middle mouse wheel to just to rotate it around like this. Now we can apply our iris material to all of this. So I open up my material editor again. I can hit M on the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts. So I can make sure I've got iris selected and then go assign material to selection. Click away, you'll see that we've got the blue in there. And if that's not dark enough for you, you can still change it with the blue selected. Go down to diffuse and I can actually make it a lot darker if I like. So I can make it a really dark blue. Click OK and it's actually already gone darker. Now I need to make a selection of just this bit in the middle. So I go back to my selection tool, make sure I've got my circular selection region. Click and drag just in the middle so all of these ones are selected. Then go to the pupil material and assign material to selection. Click away and there's my pupil. So I've got a blue iris and a black pupil and a white eyeball and we're making great progress. We've made our eye. Now I no longer want to see the grid in this particular perspective view, so I can just hit G and that will toggle on and off the grid. And if you want to get rid of these selection boundary boxes around here, you just hit the J key, J on your keyboard and they're gone. So they're there with J and gone with J and also G takes your grid away and reveals it. Okay, so now we've got our eyeball, I'm going to hit Alt W to go to four views. And we're ready for the next bit. Now the next bit we're going to do is we're going to create the eyelids, which is another sphere. So I'm going to right click again on the front viewport and take it full screen with Alt W. And I'm going to go back to my Create tab and I'm going to click Sphere. And once again, I'm going to create it with a keyboard entry. I'm not going to click and drag. I want to be absolutely precise. So open up the keyboard entry. And where it says 30, I'm going to take that to 31. And now I can click Create. It's created a sphere directly over the top of the eyeball that we've created, which is just a tiny bit bigger. And I'm going to rename this one, I'm going to call it Eyelid. Eyelid. Okay, so we've created this, um, but it's hidden our eyeball, and that's actually not very useful. So what we need to do now is go over to the Modify panel. So click on the Modify tab. And you'll see that we haven't got many parameters, but we do have a very interesting one towards the bottom. It says Slice On. If you click on Slice On, these two sliders are available. And if you start pulling these sliders down, you'll see that the eye is opening. Now, obviously, it's in the wrong place, but that's simply fixed by rotating it. So we can rotate this sphere so that we can get to the point where the eye is opening over the iris and pupil. Now, I have angle snap on here, so if you haven't got angle snap, you can either click on the tab or hit A. A toggles it on and off. And if you want to make sure you know what it is, you can right click on it and it gives you some options. And at the moment, I'm snapping to five degrees, which is going to suit me down to the ground because I want to rotate it by 90 degrees or 180, so five degree increments is great. So turn that off and I select my rotate tool over here or I hit E on my keyboard. Make sure that the eyelid sphere is selected and I can see the name up here. And now if I take the green one or the middle one here and start to pull it, I can pull it around. You can see I've got feedback on screen, although I'm finding it a little bit hard to see because it's yellow. 95, 90 degrees. There you go, that's 90 degrees. And also, I can take the red stick and I can just pull it down again and go down 90 degrees or thereabouts. And there we go. So now we have an eye with eyelids that we can control. So if I just move my eyelids, controls, so my bottom eyelid is actually the top one where it says slice from, and my top eyelid is going to be the bottom one. And now I have eyelids that I can open and close over my eye. Brilliant, so now we have created the eye. The next job will be to start to create some controllers. And I'll show you that in the next tutorial.